everybody, it's Scott, and welcome back to Following Jesus. We are starting up a, a brand new um, series, uh, Interviews with Disciples, uh, finding out from them what Jesus, the, the relationship they've had with Jesus through the years, and, and uh, them following Jesus throughout their lives, what impact that has had in their lives. And we are going to start off with a dear friend of mine for many decades, uh, Brother Jamie. How are you, Jamie? Good, Scott. Nice to be here. It's good to have you. So, Jamie, uh, how long have we known each other? About 30 years, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's about 30 years. Right. And uh, so we met at church, right? Yep. Yeah. A little church in Encinitas and my father-in-law pastored. Yeah. 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 So, um, what, kind of, what kind of work do you do, Jamie? Well, I'm on disability now. Um, but I was a maritime lawyer. Um, I was an attorney for uh, ship owners uh, and their insurance companies um, and uh, was a specialist uh, in, in maritime law uh, for about 20 years. So maritime law. Yeah. I, I don't think you, you're the only person I know that's even associated with anything maritime. <laughs> well, believe it or not, even living on the coast here in San Diego, um, there's only about five of us that do what I do. For in, the entire coast? For, the enti for San Diego County. San Diego. And uh, at, until 2018, which is when I had to stop working, um, there were only 38 certified specialists in maritime law in the state of California. 38? 38 of them. And you're one of them? And I, well, I was one of them. You were one of them? Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit, too. Sure. As we go on. So, how long uh, have you been following Jesus? About 30 years. Uh, I, I, um, my wife led me to Christ when we were She's dating. Uh, she was probably 19 and I was probably 18 when I decided that I needed to turn my life over to Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So it's been about, has it been that long? Has it been almost yeah. 30 years? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. So um, in those 30 years, uh, were you, have you been active in the church? Yes. Yeah. Um, being a small church, uh, my father-in-law's church was small. Uh, I've, over the 28 years that I was attending while he was still serving, um, I ran the soundboard, I played in the worship band, um, I've taught Sunday school to every grade and even watched the preschooler kids. Uh, really? Yeah. So I've, and I've taught on Wednesday nights for Bible study at, at the really? church. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've played a lot of roles uh, at, at New Life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's outstanding. So, so one of the things that, uh, okay, so anyone that will listen to me, um, uh, what I'm telling them about being a disciple of Jesus is that all the disciples that I know of all do at least these four things. The first one is that they, they pray. They're, they're, they're always praying. They have a continuous open line of prayer with God, yeah. with all sorts of types of prayer, right? Oh, yeah. Um, that they, they study their Bibles and they're students of the Bible. Um, that uh, they look forward to fellowship and being around other believers, other, oh, other yeah. disciples and followers of Jesus. And then they look for ways to serve, right? That's an important part in my, in my Christian walk is is serving. When my father-in-law retired, um, I had been an elder in the church uh, for about 10 years. And I thought, okay, he retired, so did I. I'm, I'm going to just kind of sit in the, in, the, in the gallery, you know, yeah, in, yeah. The, in the pews with everybody else. But 
that didn't last long. No, <laughs> no it did not last long. Um, when we landed and found a new church, now um, I play in the worship band uh, on a much grander scale than at New Life. Yeah, um, a little bigger place. Much bigger place. Yeah. And um, uh, I also volunteer often um, uh, for various events that, that they have. Uh, and before COVID uh, hit, I was a greeter at, at church. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so it, it so didn't, like I said, it didn't last long. It was important to me. I wanted to be around people that were serving. Yes. I, I missed that. And um, it was a new church for us and a new exciting experience. Mm -hmm to start serving there, but now I find it to be a really integral part of my walk is to serve with others that are serving Him. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So, so with regard to Bible study, um, do you study your Bible yourself? Yeah. Or do you, do you let somebody else take care of that for you? And is that something that, that, well, the way, um, the way our the sermons work at, at our church, um, we get sermon notes and fill in the blank uh, stuff yeah. uh, sheets to kind of um, help guide our study. And then there's some probing questions that are part of that as well. So it's digging deeper in the in the study of the sermon. So yeah. I do that study. Um, uh, every every week um but we're going through the book of acts right now and yes. so and slowly i think we're in week 40 or something like that okay. um so i have read acts and i read it in much more detail than i have and then i decided to read all of the letters to the churches that paul is talking about uh, that Paul, Paul's ministry yeah. uh, in the book of Acts. So Corinthians, Philippians, and, you know, the epistles. Right. Um, and that's, that's really been rich yeah. to take Acts and read about the churches that they visited and he visited in his, Paul's ministry. And then to go and read the letters that were that were sent to that were them, sent to them yeah. after his visit there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's been kind of fun. Um, well, so you would, I guess then that you would encourage people to, to be students of the Bible. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're told to meditate on God's Word. We're told to have, um, uh, told in the Bible, you know, we are to be ready and equipped um, uh, to face challenges and to live out the gospel and preach by our life and by our mouths. And we're not going to be able to do that without knowing God's word. Amen. And there's so much richness in, in the Bible that it is salvation is simple enough to understand in God's word, but God's word goes so much deeper than that, that scholars spend their entire life learning about the Bible and and really deep into the weeds in the Bible and they still haven't touched the bottom. Right. Um, right. Amen. So being in the Word is it's very important. Um, yeah. It's important to me. Uh, it's brought me through hard times and good times and um yeah it's a special thing god's word and the time in god's word is important amen so so let that be an encouragement to you to to dust off that old bible uh, on the bookshelf oh, yeah. uh, crack it open and start becoming a student of that book because it is so rich. It is. Um, in everything, in the content that it has uh, for all of us in our lives as we follow Jesus. So you, you have 
you've been a, a disciple of Jesus for, for decades now. Do you find that your prayer life, your time of prayer, do you see that that is an increasing thing or a decreasing activity in your life? Now it's increasing. Yeah? Yeah. Um, yeah, most certainly in the last, especially the last couple of years, um, it's my prayer life has been um, much more rich. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I had much of my Christian walk, I didn't spend a lot of time in prayer. Mm. And God was, I wouldn't say a cosmic consultant to me, but uh, it was, he was not, I was not as close to him as what I realized can be attained. I see, yeah. And for me, it's taken, um, it's taken tragedy to get there. It's yeah. taken some pretty serious trials that I've gone through to, to realize how much God loves me and how much he is a part of who I am. And, um, I'll tell you th that even though the last two years have been very difficult, it's been the best two years of my spiritual life by far. Well, now, you, that, that makes for a good transition point, uh, Jamie. Uh, amen. And um, you've had, you've, I've known that you've had some medical issues that have been quite persistent through the years. Yeah. Um, and now, I, I, I would say that they're severe now. Yeah. Right? So, so why don't you describe to everybody, you know, some of the challenges you've had. So, I... I've suffered from chronic pain um, since my late teens. Uh, I have an arthritic condition, autoimmune disorder called ankylosing spondylitis. And I've managed, kind of badly managed uh, my pain over, over the years. It's been tough, um, but I was able to live with it and fairly well. Um, I was in pain, but I just gripped my teeth and and suffered through it. Um, and then in 2017, um, I s dropped a lot of weight, was feeling very sick, um, and my symptoms were off the charts. And um, then that was in late 2017. All of 2018, I was miserable, losing a lot of weight, fatigue, and um, and then I was injured in a medical procedure, which gave me some nerve damage. And it also set for set set a foot started a very serious downhill slide. It precipitated. Uh, within a couple of weeks after the procedure, um, I started to slur my words and started having problem picking up my left foot up off the ground. And, um, and then in December of 2018, my lower body just stopped working. Um, I'm functional now, but it was uh, pretty scary. And doctors had no idea what was going on. And um, it wasn't until June of this year, 2020, that I was diagnosed with primary progressive multiple sclerosis. So the pain is worse. And like you said, it's a bit more serious now. Um, yeah. Yeah. I have... I stutter and slur my words. I have cognitive issues and um, yeah, my lower body is not what it used to be. Um, right. I walk with a cane a lot of the time and sometimes a, a, a walker. So I was at the height of my career, um, one of the top maritime attorneys on the West Coast and 
all of that's gone. All of that's gone. All of that's gone. We had to sell our home. Um, it had stairs, and I can't do stairs anymore. And plus, you know, this has been a bit uh, hard financially. Um, but I tell you, God has just brought us through this. As my time with Him has been incredibly rich. Well, that, that brings up, I, I did want to ask you, you know, how, how has your relationship with Jesus through the decades, how has that helped you oh. through this, this um, uh, crisis? Yeah. This, uh... Well, I, I don't know how people that don't have Jesus in their life go through similar things or go th through tragedy. Um, Christ, my relationship with him for, you know, the decades, several decades before all of this happened, it, I had that foundation to draw upon. Right, right. And, and I prayed, people were praying for me, and I really leaned hard on him and I knew that even though I was not okay I was gonna be okay it right. was well with my soul and right. I was okay with being sick I mean that I was suffering hard um, that period in late 2018 um, before I collapsed and, and after. And as I really was seeking God in all of this and um, praying constantly, I felt the overwhelming presence of God. Yeah. And tangible, just like someone else was in the room. Comforting you? Very much so. Very much so. And that I was really frustrated with my body, but not with God. And I started finding a bit of purpose in what I was going through. Um, and I have a couple of verses that really mean, mean and have meant a lot. And you'll see how this kind of, this is how my journey has been in the last couple of years. So my attitude of bowing before Christ and putting myself at, at the foot of the cross by continually praying to God, being in his word and just trying to let all of this go. The verse in uh, 2 Corinthians 4.16 uh, through 18, it says, Therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Now, I really grabbed hold of that. My body was wasting away. Right. But my relationship with my God was more rich than it had ever been. Your eternal relationship. Right. Right. My perspective was... Yeah. was was changing um, and then in Romans uh, Romans 818 it's a smaller one but uh, Romans 818 I consider that our present sufferings are not worth the comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Now again, I've got an eternal 
attitude towards my suffering. Right. But that wasn't, that's not where, that's not where I ended up. That's not where I'm at right now. Um, this is, these verses are incredibly comforting to me. Amen. They're looking inward and I'm being comforted. But there's more to it. I, I still, I never blamed God for what I was going through. Yeah. Um, and I have been comforted very much through his word and through the body of Christ. The people of the, around us have just been incredibly wonderful. But not too long after I got the MRI Diagno or the MS diagnosis, I heard a sermon that really kind of uh, set forth in motion um, some study on my part that really, um, really touched me. And the title of the sermon was, What If It's Not All About Us? Yeah. And what if my story is not just my story, it's part of someone else's story? Right. And what really struck me um, through that study and the post-sermon study was in John chapter 9, um, where are we? There we go. John chapter 9. Jesus and the disciples are, um, uh, I think they're on their way to the temple, or uh, I think that's where the, the setup is. But he was with the disciples, and... In John chapter 9, verse 1, it says, As he went along, he saw a blind man from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man uh, or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus said, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. But this happened so that the work of God may be displayed in his life. So, that's my attitude I'm still called to go through life well and we are to preach the gospel with how we live not just the words out of our mouth but our actions and deeds right uh, and for me that still applies and in fact I may be that I'm a bit more effective for the kingdom as a man with MS and ankylosing spondylitis. I, it's a role in the kingdom that I would not have signed up for, but it's one that I'm willing to go along with. Amen. It makes my life much more rich and my relationship with God so much more stronger, knowing that not only am I being taken care of, but I may be preaching to somebody with this. Right. And so you can kind of see the evolution of, yes, God is renewing me day by day. And man, I needed that. That was like triage. That was emergency room. Yeah. God's word in the emergency room right. is, yeah, you may be wasting away, but you're going to be okay. The future is in his hands and God has my eternity. Right. I went from that to actually having a mission with it. Right. Uh, so, then, so then what would you say to those that, that are watching this, that uh, themselves are going through uh, some grinding times that 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 difficult challenges that that they've been confronted with What kind of encouragement would you would you give them? 
Well, I, I learned through this, especially this last two years, um, I learned that there's a difference between pain and misery. And I mean, it could be emotional pain, it could be physical pain, the kind of pain that, that I have. Um, but there's a difference between pain and misery and it has to, it's a choice, really. And living a, living a miserable life is very much inwardly looking. Okay. And, and not outwardly looking. And for me, I really had a strong, healthy dose of that through God's word. Yeah. That it's not about, it's, I don't need to live a miserable life. Right. I don't need to be in misery. I live in the kind of pain that most people would call their doctor immediately for. Right. And, but I'm not going to be miserable about it. Yeah, I hurt. I hurt a lot and I would rather not hurt. Uh, I would rather not struggle with walking. And I'm, of course, scared of my future because I have a progressive form of MS. And um, who knows what my future is going to be like except for God. Right. So I find it a lot better to serve him along the way. Amen. And live so, a life pleasing so, to him. So you would encourage people to do the same. Uh, absolutely. To, to, focus on, to focus on their relationship with God and how God might be able to use this time yeah. to glorify himself. Absolutely. Through you. Yeah. Is, is that that's, that's exactly right. That's that's it in a in a nutshell. I and through that, you may be speaking volumes to to others out there. To those around you. To those around you. That God's put in. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's been said that you know sometimes we're the only Bible someone will read. Right. That's right. You know, we may be the introduction. Yep. To Jesus, to there's, somebody. There's the witness, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I have that joy. I have that peace that passes understanding. Right. I've experienced that. Which is also in the Bible. Which is also in the Bible. So read your Bibles. <laughs> yes, read your Bibles. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, It's been an amazing journey. Um, and... I could not have gone through this without my 30 years, you know. Um, but like I said, during that time before all of this calamity has happened, my relationship was, with God was was not nearly as close. It was more distant. It was it more distant, and it took suffering for me to open his word up a little bit more yeah and it really did and yeah the one regret i have is not having this relationship that i do now much earlier right right um but yeah he has brought me through a lot a whole lot so jamie with the last couple minutes that we have now is there anything that you would like to to convey or share uh, to to anybody who who might be watching anywhere in in the world right now, um, any words of encouragement, anything you'd like to to let them yes. know? Yes, that peace that passes understanding, the joy in hard circumstances and in suffering, there is joy. That doesn't happen without an understanding of who God is and what Jesus did for us uh, on, on the cross. You don't get to that point without studying the Word and seeking out what God's character is like 
and you do that by being in the word and being around those who are believers and it's so important to to have that christian fellowship uh in good times and in bad um it makes so much it makes life so much more rich to have uh, a church family or a christian family uh around you but it means nothing without knowing who Jesus is. And there is that joy that no one can take from you. And it's a joy that surpasses circumstances. It's the presence of God in your heart that brings you through the tough times and helps you attain the good times. Um, without Jesus Christ, it's a dying, it's a lost in a dying world without Christ. And even in these troubled times that we have, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and holding on to his truths and understanding who he is is not going to be attained unless you're in the Word. Amen. And that's, that's, what's, that's where the relationship is built, is Amen. through his Word. Amen. Amen. Well, you can see why I thought it was important for you to meet Jamie. Thank you, Jamie. Yeah. Um, and, and I praise God for the, uh, for the relationship that we've had yeah, all these too. years. Uh, you and your family have been such a blessing to me and my family uh, for sure. Um, I want to let you know that we will continue to pray for you. Thank I you. Would, I would encourage all of you to keep Jamie and his family in your prayers. Um, we will continue to, to bring you other disciples uh, in interviews. And, uh, Jamie, I just want to say thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Brother. My pleasure. Yes, very yeah. much. And uh, so that wraps up our first interview uh, in this new series, Interview with a Disciple. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was a blessing for you. And until next time, keep following Jesus. Bye now.